Good morning. Today is Monday, May the 1st, and it is the fourth Monday of Easter. We welcome you here to this Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia. My name is Margie, and I'm a lay reader here, happy to be sharing this prayer with you today. Uh, we will be remembering St. Philip and St. James. Let us pray. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a, clou a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race which is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Today's psalm is number 139. Uh, you can find that on page 509 if you're using a, a 1962 version of the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, thou hast searched me out and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts from afar. Thou art about my path and about my bed, and art acquainted with all my ways. For lo, there is not a word in my tongue, but thou, O Lord, knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Sure, I am that the Lord will avenge the poor and maintain the cause of the helpless. The righteous also shall give thanks unto thy name, and the just shall continue in thy sight. Today's lesson is written in James chapter 1. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will he be brought us to birth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of all his creation. Ye know this, my beloved brethren, and so let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And therefore lay aside all filthiness and residue of wickedness, and receive with meekness and the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Here endeth the lesson. Some information about these two apostles. The four marks of the true church are proof of its authenticity. One holy Catholic and apostolic are the trademark stamp of the true church, providing it is the church founded by Jesus Christ. No other ecclesial community bears this trademark, and none except the Orthodox even claim to bear it. The mark of one means the church is visibly one in spite of its many tongues, nations, classes, and races. The church is one in her doctrine, her sacraments, and her hierarchy. This oneness is not theoretical. It is tangible, real, and identifiable even to those without a doctorate in theology. This one Christ-founded church began with 12 followers 
who gathered as one around Jesus. These 12 eventually appointed their own successors, who then in turn appointed successors, and so on through the centuries down to the present. The Universal College of Bishops, the successor body to the 12 apostles, is the means by which the oneness or the unity of the church is expressed, protected, and guaranteed. Bishops are not a secondary attribute or a development of Christianity. They are embedded into and co-joined with the word of God in one complex reality. They are not an outside source of authority external to the scriptures. There simply would be no scripture without that pre-existing authority which nurtured and developed it. The church was the incubator of the New Testament. Not much is known with certainty about the apostles Philip and James, apart from their names and some few references in the New Testament, St. James, commonly called the less, due perhaps to his short direct successor of St. Peter, the first pope. From this perspective, every pope after St. Peter is a second pope. So for example, the 200th pope chronologically was still the second pope, theologically. No president would claim that he is the direct successor of George Washington. He is the successor of his predecessor. Theological truths transcend space and time since their source, God, exists outside of space and time. The office of St. Peter is theologically guaranteed by the easy to find on the surface of the text words of Christ telling St. Peter that he is the rock upon which he will build his church. Today's Pope and every Pope occupy that same office. They are protected by that same divine guarantee and immediately they succeed St. Peter when he is chosen by the Holy Spirit to occupy his chair. What pertains to this office of the bishop in Rome also pertains to the office of the 12 apostles. Today's saints, Philip and James, were called by name by Christ himself. After being called, they took the step that many who are called never take. They followed. The 12 walked at Christ's side on dusty trails during his years of public ministry. They ate and drank with him by the fire. They slept under the cold desert sky with him. And Jesus looked right into their eyes and only their eyes and spoke directly to their faces and only their faces when he said on a Thursday night that was deeply holy, do this in memory of me. And then they did that and many other things besides in memory of him for the rest of their lives. St. Philip's and James, your hidden witness to Christ is less well known than that of other apostles, but is eloquent testimony to your quiet fidelity to building the church after the ascension. From your exalted place in heaven, intercede for all who seek your assistance. Today's collect. O almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our quote today comes from Dorothy Neville. And she says, the real art of conversation is not only to say the right thing at the right place, but to leave unsaid the wrong thing.
at the tempting moments. Thank you for joining us today. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.